Welcome to the latest episode of the Real World Nutrition Podcast. This is episode 147, continuing with the summer series on common nutrition myths. This is myth number eight. You must eat small, frequent meals to boost your metabolism. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real World Nutrition Podcast. I am your host, Shelley Royal, registered dietitian nutritionist and the founder of Real World Nutrition. So diving into today's myth, this is one I've heard for so many years, for as long as I have been a dietitian and probably even before that. This idea that we need to have small, frequent meals and that helps keep your metabolism burning, keeps your metabolism up, and this helps you with weight loss or whatever correlation people put with this having small, frequent meals. So as I'm continuing with this summer series on common nutrition myths, I am going to, of course, as you know by now, dive into this topic. So I want to address some of the origins of this myth. As with a lot of myths, it's often hard to know exactly where this started or where it comes from. Mostly urban legend passed on from one person to another, where somebody maybe just found that this worked best for them, and then it became popular for other people. So this idea of eating small, frequent meals to boost metabolism has been around for quite some time, as I said. And this premise behind this is that eating more often will keep your metabolism running at a higher rate throughout the day, leading to more calories burned throughout the day and better weight management. But is there really any truth to this? So let me explain a little bit more about this myth and then get into the details about it, the truth about it. So this myth of eating five to six small meals a day that you can keep your metabolism stoked. So think about when we have a fire going, we have to continue to add more logs or more fuel to keep it burning. And this idea of eating frequently is this idea that will burn calories more efficiently. And I've seen this in many diet plans, many fitness enthusiasts, many programs that combine the diet and intense exercise with this approach here and claiming that weight loss is better and can help prevent overeating by controlling hunger. So let me address a couple things here, the weight loss and the prevention of overeating. So first, the truth about medical metabolic rate and meal frequency, which is in part related to the weight loss. So the research does not support this claim. Studies have shown that meal frequency does not impact our resting metabolic rate or our total energy expenditure. So really what this means, resting metabolic rate is if you were unable to go do your daily activities and you were at rest all day long, there's a certain amount of calories we burn and it's based on several factors. So our height, our weight, our age, and our birth sex. How fast are we burning those calories? And there's other factors like how much fat mass versus lean tissue that is much more difficult to assess. But really, it turns out having those meal frequency or that more frequent meals doesn't affect that basal metabolic rate or sorry, more specifically resting metabolic rate or even your total energy expenditure. So what really matters is the number of calories one consumes throughout the entire day and the quality of those calories. The other part of this too is helping with preventing or I should say minimizing hunger 
So I find that a lot of times people will go several hours, four, five, six hours or longer without eating. And then when they are ready to eat, they tend to overconsume because they're so hungry. So that's really maybe another aspect of how these small frequent meals comes into play. So when you eat, let me explain a little bit more about this. There's this factor. So I mentioned a little bit about resting metabolic rate. And we take your height, weight, age, birth sex. We also take into consideration how much physical activity you do on a day-to-day basis to estimate, estimate how many calories you need per day. But there's another factor that people don't realize we have included in these various calculations. When you eat, your body uses energy to digest, absorb, and process all those nutrients in that food. So we need to burn some energy to be able to access that energy. So people hear this, there's a certain amount of calories we need to even get that process of digesting our food going. We refer to this process as the thermic effect of food, or TEF. And this thermic effect of food is about 10% of your total daily energy expenditure or your total calories for the day. But it turns out it doesn't vary with meal frequency. So let me explain this a little bit more. If you have a meal of 600 calories, about 60 of those calories are used just to start the process of burning or metabolizing that food. So people say, oh, then I'll just eat more. Well, it usually doesn't work out to be in a benefit. If you eat 2,000 calories, 200 of those calories are used to digest, absorb, and metabolize that food. If you eat 8,000 calories, that would be 800 calories. So it really doesn't make it any better or any different. And we say this 10%. This is an average because carbohydrates, fat, and protein have a different thermic effect. However, most foods are a combination of all three of those nutrients. So again, this thermic effect of food will not vary with meal frequency. So whether you eat three meals, you eat four meals, you eat six meals, your overall metabolism will stay constant. The other thing that I'll mention here is I have seen where people say they eat six small meals. If that works for them, fabulous. And I've also seen where people say they eat six small meals and that small is relative. For me, it's Sometimes I say small meals, it's a snack. So there's some semantics here, but I've seen individuals where they're eating these six meals and they're not small. So you can take your regular three day, whoever whoever does this, it can be done with various approaches. If somebody eats three meals a day, they can take that same three meal, divide each of those meals in half and spread it out to turn into six. We want the calories to end up being the same. So let me talk about some of the supporting evidence, some science that has looked at this. So a couple of studies that I'll link in the show notes. One study that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition compared the effects of three meals per day versus six meals per day on metabolism and appetite control. Now, these meals three meals versus six meals, the total calories per day were the same. And the researchers found no significant difference in metabolic rate between the two groups. It also didn't find a difference in weight loss or weight changes between the two groups. And then another study in the, let me make sure I have this reference here, Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, 
again also linked in the show notes, concluded that e- increasing meal frequency, so having more frequent meals, does not boost metabolism or enhance fat loss. So these findings align with the concept that our bodies are remarkably adaptable and can efficiently process nutrients regardless of how meals are spaced throughout the day. There is this idea that if we go without eating for several hours, our metabolism slows down, which isn't really how it works. Our metabolism is going to be going up and down throughout the day, much like blood pressure, much like glucose levels, and it averages out. And the other thing is, is that if we eat one large meal and a couple of snacks versus six small meals versus three meals, your metabolism isn't going to be significantly impacted there. Now, if you went several days without eating, your metabolism will start slowing down to conserve energy. But this isn't a going between meals that doesn't happen in going between meals. So, I mean, you can do what you want, but the science does not support that our metabolism is significantly affected by how often we eat. What affects our metabolism the most is the amount of lean tissue we have in our body. So the more muscle we have, the faster our metabolism will be. The more fat we have, the slower the metabolism will be. And that just means it takes more energy, having more muscle. Muscle burns more energy at rest compared to fat. So it's going to help. If we also do cardiovascular activities, we'll be burning a higher rate of calories when we get our heart rate up. And for a little bit afterwards, once we are done with our cardiovascular activities. So exercise has a bigger effect on our metabolism than does the how often we are eating. Now, we do have a natural decline in our metabolism or calorie burning rate as we get older. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. Age is age. But if you maintain your muscle mass, maintain your physical activity, it will take less, your metabolism will remain healthier or higher. All right, so let me talk about some practical tips in finding what works best for you. So what does this mean for you? It means you have flexibility in choosing an eating pattern that fits your lifestyle and your preferences. So there is no one size fits all. Some people can handle and easily do the six small meals a day and it works for them. Others may prefer two larger meals and a snack. Some people may prefer three meals a day. Some may prefer three meals plus a snack. It is so individual based on your schedule, your lifestyle, and even the day. Sometimes I have two meals and a snack. Sometimes I have two meals. Sometimes I have three meals. It varies. So here's some practical tips here. Number one, listen to your hunger cues. Pay attention to your body signals and eat when you're hungry. So whether that means three larger meals or several smaller ones, what pattern works for you and keeps you satisfied? Number two, Focus on nutrient-dense foods. So regardless of how often you're eating, prioritize those whole nutrient-dense, nutrient-rich foods and include a balance of protein, healthy fats, and complex carbohydrates in your overall eating pattern. Number three, manage portion sizes. Be mindful of portion sizes to avoid overeating, especially with more frequent meals. As I said, if you're eating more often, make sure those portion sizes equal 
small meals. So eating smaller portions more often can lead to consuming more calories if you're not paying attention. And number four, stay hydrated. Sometimes thirst is mistaken for hunger. So drink plenty of water throughout the day to stay hydrated. So one of the old school tips that I still say now and then, if you feel hungry, drink some water, wait 15 minutes. If you still feel hungry, then you're probably hungry. If you don't feel hungry, you are probably thirsty. So here's the conclusion, the bottom line here. The idea of eating small, frequent meals to boost metabolism is a myth. What is most important is the total calorie intake and the nutrition quality of your diet. Total calorie intake is more important. So find an eating pattern that works for you, supports your energy level, fits your lifestyle. So if you would like more information on how to have this approach, as always, you can check the link in the show notes and schedule a free 30-minute introductory call. You can also take a look and check out the Real World Nutrition Membership, where this is one of many things that I address within the membership. And that's open until July 31st for enrollment. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check that link in the show notes as well. All right, everyone, that is it for this week's episode of the Real World Nutrition Podcast and myth number eight. You all take care this week and bye for now.